Are you hungry for authentic Caribbean food? Like jerk, chicken, oxtail, red snapper, shrimp, tofu, and rasta pasta? Well, find your way over to Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Pika in downtown Atlanta. Them belly full, but we hungry. Mango's Caribbean uh-huh. Restaurant, open daily from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. And on Friday and Saturday, we're open till 4 a.m. Come to Mango's and put some spice in your life. Oh, we've got a good thing going. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Peacock. In downtown Atlanta. For more info or directions, call 404 404- 698-3992 or log on to mangoes caribbean restaurant.com for instant coupons text m-a-n-g-o-s to 313131 tell your mama hungry papa hungry but i'm hungry mangoes caribbean restaurant authentic caribbean cuisine open up the door tell your mama hungry Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. Now you can live in Texas and not have a good red meat blend. Texas Cowboy Dust is designed for steak and other red meats. It's out to be my most popular spice blend, made with onions, peppers, ground mushrooms, pink salt, and other spices. Texas Cowboy Dust also goes great with chicken, pork, vegetables, and has a restaurant quality sheen to gravies and sauces. It's like a loop machine. Going around town, people trying to get down. Vanilla smoked sea salt seasoning is for seafood. The tarragon and fennel bring out the natural sweetness in seafood. I also use it in rice dishes, on yams, asparagus, blueberry pancakes, and believe it or not, chocolate chip cookies. Vanilla smoked sea salt adds a salty and savory component to sweet dishes that create a symphony for the tongue. Yeah. I love my HBCU. And boy, I love it, love it. I love it, love it. I love my HBCU. And man, I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. Man. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I tune into the HBCU sports lab to see if my team won a loss. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, keep tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, he know what he be talking about. Mike and Charles, they know what they be talking about. They compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to my. This is Dr. Cavill with Inside HBC Sports Lab. Episode 117 of Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. The show that is covering the sporting HBC dash for all things HBC sports from institutions large and small, from the NAIA to the NCAA. We share insights and information on the HBC sports culture and HBC athletic aesthetics to facilitate the story of the HBC athletic programs and the business of HBC sports. I'm your host, Dr. Yada Cavill, along with my co-host, Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Mike is back from assignment, so we get to bring it hot and heavy today, I imagine. We are filming from our home studio and sending a signal live to our Case Waste 1230 AM studios with the Texas Southern, Texas Radio Hall of Famer, Ralph Cooper in beautiful home of Texas Southern University from Houston, Texas. Today's episode of Inside HBC Sports Lab is sponsored by THG Agency, LLC. THG Agency is a company that provides sporting and educational consulting and data analytics. With that, welcome back, Mike. How are you doing? Pretty good. How are you doing? Doing well, doing well. How about you, Charles? I'm hanging in there, Dr. Deville, enjoying uh, the post-Saturday uh, and Sunday shows and 
I tell you what, it's uh, spring has been very, very busy. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit, huh? Just no a doubt. Little. Uh, let me welcome in some of these great people that are jumping on here, showing us some love. Chantel Fleming, how about those Aggies? Yeah, they continue to get it done. Uh, Willie Alex Hines, good evening, everybody. It's Tuesday night, lecture time once again, Richmond, Virginia, CIAA in the house. Uh, Ree is on here. What's up, guys? I heard Dion just created a new classic for us. I think I heard he's going to call it the Boom Block Classic. What is it? What is it? Boom Box Classic. This yeah, looks good. Feels good. <laughs> These folks are crazy. Reggie House, <laughs> lay in the house. Reginald Johnson, D. I love restoring the roar. Reggie says, "Good evening, gentlemen." Yes, indeed. K. Johnson, good evening. Time for the welcome lecture. Let's go. That's right. Let's go. Chuck Hunt, Ricky Burton, Arby Parker. Ricky says, what's up? Rough season, but still repping the G. I like that. That's right. Up and down. Get it done. James Knox, Keith Martin, ready for the lecture. Alan Malone. Everybody's in the house. Let's go. Joseph Anthony Good Goodwin, Robert E. Smith, Alan Malone, Kay Johnson, Belinda Johnson, Rob Keenan. Alan Malone, A.D. Man, we're deep. Frederick V. Roberts. Brother Roberts on here. Robert E. Smith. <laughs> Jackson. How about those Jags? Yes, big bounce back game. Boy, they put Texas Southern. Man, I don't, I don't even know what to say. Belinda Johnson, the Braves representing. I see you. Y'all keep them coming. George Walker. Joseph Anthony Goodwin representing Alabama a and You got a big one this weekend. Chad Cooper's in the house. Keep them coming, and we'll reach back out and give some more shout-outs. Y'all keep the comments, you know, the good ones and the ones that we get a chance in between different discussions we try to represent. And if you have some questions you want to answer, let me know, especially during this segment when we're bringing you the news. We might be able to get into it a little bit before we get into our interview coming up in the first half of the show. And then we even have a surprise. We'll have another interview uh, just to give you an update on some baseball in these parts in the second half of the show. With that, let me go straight to Mike since he hasn't had the mic in a while. Make sure he gets his allotment of time. You know, he's looking like he wants uh, some attention. So let me make sure we give it to him, Charles. What you got? Well, what that, you got, Mike? Well, <laughs> Mike, oh, he's a, I'm going to read the title for you. PVAMU Bowling overcomes JSU for fifth SWAC tourney title in program history. You couldn't I'll read, read that. That one, could you? P <laughs> PVAMU Bowling overcomes JSU for the fifth SWAT tournament title in program history. Congratulations to the Lady Panthers. They claim the 2021 SWAC Women's Bowling Championship. Uh, so they led by they're led by their MVP, Patricia Rosales, along with all tournament selections, Asia Wren and Crystal Klein. The Lady Panthers defeated. Jackson State, 4-2 in match 10 of the tournament to force an 11th and deciding match. In all seriousness, Charles, messing with you, great match. Uh, they were going, it seemed like they were going neck and neck, but P PVAMU won the match by identical margin, 4-2, as the Lady Panthers went on to win their second consecutive, consecutive post-title. So that gives them a title. In 2019 and 20. 21 with an overall 16 and four league record. The Lady Panthers won the third straight regular season during the 2020 2021 campaign. It was also the fourth regular season conference championship in five years for this program. Congratulations to not only the Lady Panthers, but Coach Glenn White on their performance. Big, big, big time, boy. Rings and things. Things going yeah. on. Not the prayer of you. I'm on sure Panthers 1876, the title of our show was Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings, is that right? No, fellow, Fellowship of the Rings, sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> James Knox says it's Swack's world. We just trying to get some love. D-U-U -D for life. Virginia Union University. Oh, okay. Dr. Hill Ely. Yeah, I like that. Hill Ely. Dr. Hill Ely uh, is an alumni of Virginia Union University and a man of Omega Psi Phi reference out there. I've seen some uh, looks at there representing v Virginia Union and talking a little bit about that HBCU history. I thought that was pretty classic. 
have one other question and then I'll go to you, Charles, for an update. Uh, Reggie Howe says, how did the HBCU schools with the NCAA basketball game from the money payout? Well, each conference, um, once they get in the tournament and play a game, they get a credit, which is worth about $1.56 or $1.6 million right now. Then if you win a game, you get a second credit. And you get that money over six years. So it doubles. So instead of the SWAC just getting that one point six, if you would, just to round it off, and the MEAC as well, since they won their final, uh, first four game, uh, both conferences get that dual credit. So they're getting about 3.2 or right under $3.2 million over the next six years. And remember, it was just a couple of years ago when Texas Southern won. So that six-year payment is not over. So there's going to be some laps where Texas Southern, I mean, where the SWAC is going to be extremely healthy and well paid in regards to what they'll be able to do with that a bunch of money. So keep them coming. We'll sneak them in there here and there between our breaks. With that, let me go to Charles to see what type of news that he wants to share with the people. Well, sure thing. Uh, kudos, number one, to Prairie View winning that uh, bowling championship. Kudos, as Chantel Fleming puts it in the chat, kudos to the North Carolina NT Lady Aggies. They're the 2021 MEAC uh, bowling champions. So definitely want to uh, give shout outs to, to both programs. Uh, today, the SWAC announces spring football TV schedule updates. So the SWAC has announced updates to its 2021 spring football schedule. So now Southern at Jackson State, scheduled for Saturday, April 3rd, will be carried live on ESPN with a 4 o'clock Central Standard Time kickoff. And Alabama a and at Jackson State will be scheduled for Saturday, April 10th, and it also will be carried live on ESPN with a two o'clock kickoff. So those are the flex changes there from uh, uh, ESPN bumping up to uh, the big ESPN there. Big national audience. Big time, big time. Yeah, those games again, being flexed, that's a big deal when Charles were able to uh, renegotiate at least part of that in terms of the spring agreement. That's big, and we see it paying off dividends. Uh, the fans are doing what they need to do to make sure that these uh, games Games are being watched at a high level. Uh, so much interest from YouTube in terms of being rebroadcast, ESPN, talk shows are just going in, the new sites, whether it's HBCU Game Day, HBCU Sports, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram with pictures, a lot of lively chat all across HBCUs, but specifically for the SWAC right now. They said it's all about the SWAC. Great point. It's hot right now going on. So, a lot of good information there. Karen Griffin, hello from Southern California. I want to make sure we get some of that love there in terms of Southern California. So a great point made there. I want to share that a little bit. With that being said, let me ship it back to Mike in terms of giving me some additional updates as well. Yeah, this just in from the MEAC, 13 football players representing the uh, Middle uh, Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. Uh, member institutions are currently scheduled to take part in the NFL's HBCU Combine. You may have remembered a couple of weeks ago, we announced uh, the creation and the launch of the, the HBCU Combine. Um, the Combine was set to take place April 9th through the 10th at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Last year's HBCU Combine was canceled because of COVID-19, uh, and this year's version is currently slated to feature 42 athletes total, encompassing both 2020 and 2021 draft classes. So the MEAC athletes are uh, defensive back Trevor Merritt from Bethune-Cookman, wide receiver running back uh, Jimmy Robinson, quarterback Aquavius Williams, uh, also from Bethune-Cookman from Delaware State, defensive lineman Brandon Carswell from Florida A&M, wide receiver Marcus Williams from Morgan State, Linebackers, Rico Kennedy and Ian McBurrow. Norfolk State, linebacker Nigel Chavis and Nir uh, Quinerly, if I, if I hopefully I said that young man's name right. North Carolina a &T State had two. Of course, they had wide receiver Elijah Bell, defensive back uh, Mac McCain the third, and then North Carolina Central had defensive lineman Darius Royster. And last but not least, South Carolina State had def has defensive lineman Tyrell Goodwin. Of course, that's not the all-encompassing list. It's 42 athletes in total, 
but the MEAC has posted their, uh, their athletes as of today. Nice touch, nice touch. Let me shout out to Fred Whitted. I got his book. He showed me some love, HBCU Header Center. This is his book, Football History. You got an update of uh, HBCU, if you want, Black College Sports Encyclopedia. has a lot of great information that, you know, I dig to when I need to go in the treasure trap a little bit. Uh, shout out to Herbert Bolden, Alan Malone, as we said, Sarah Beverly, just to give some more shout outs there uh, in terms of our fans checking us out, uh, getting it in. Let me go back to Charles, see if he got some other news that he wants to share. Sure. Well, let's take a look at our SWAG Football Weekly Honors. SWAG has named Alabama State's Ezra Gray and Ryan Nettles, Arkansas Pine Bluff Skylar Perry and Isaac Peppers and Southern Shaky Thomas as its Swag Football Players of the Week for their outstanding performances during conference play this past weekend. Let's take a look at the co-offensive players. Uh, Ezra Gray, he rushed for 195 yards on 23 carries, three touchdowns during Alabama State's 35-28 national rank uh, win over Jackson State. The Gray scored on the game winner of a 50-yard run from the scrimmage with a minute 29 remaining in that game. We take a look at Skylar Perry. He went 18 of 30. Uh, set career highs in passing yards, 246, and touchdown passes, four in UAPB's 48-21 win at Grambling. It was the program's first win uh, over Grambling since 2013, Dr. Bill. Uh, defensively, we take a look at Isaac Peppers. He made a season-high 10 tackles uh, with career highs in sacks, two in force fumbles, two with one pass breakup in Arkansas Pine Bluffs, 48-21 win at Grambling. And then the specialist, we'll take a look at Shikey Thomas. He had 130 yard, 130 kick return yards on three kickoffs, one for a touchdown in Southern's 51 to 23 win over Texas Southern. So, and then our newcomer of the week is Ryan Nettles from Alabama State. He finished today 27 of 42, 257 yards and a pair of touchdowns over Jackson State. So kudos to all those young men for their swag weekly honors. Yeah, let me give a shout out to Alan Malone, a top fan, as we have it. Willie out of time, one of our top fans as well. He said that ASU, JSU was good TV. A great point made there. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a I'm save you a little bit, Charles. I, I know you uh making sure you get the football news out there, and that's always good. JSU wins SWAC Volleyball regular season championship. I was getting there. <laughs> oh, all right. I was wondering when you go. Uh, I was wondering what over there. I, 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 I was getting there. <laughs> I was wondering. I thought that. I thought he was going to lead off with that one. Hey, that was yeah, champ, not, championship. Championship one fifty three for Jackson State. He trying not to be a homer, but he he's like, let me let me stir the pot, see how long we go take. I didn't want to get too close to our interview and miss it because you know they wouldn't they wouldn't give you enough uh, payback if you didn't make sure you got that out there. With that, Mike, let me go back with you. Uh, as we got a couple of minutes before we get into this interview. What other news that you want to share today? Yeah, I want to uh, give, uh, since we've given love to everybody, I want to give some love to the GCAC. Yeah, why don't you do that? Go for Coast since Athletic Conference. <laughs> well, as you, as you know, as we announced last week, um, uh, they actually, uh, sorry, am I? Uh, you talking about them adding fists last week? The yeah, they there? added fists last week. And they also have, you know, their set of weekly honors. So we'll start, you know, with uh, they've honored uh, attack and defenders for the volleyball team. So I want to give them a chance. Uh, Dillard's Chloe Young as well uh, makes her fourth appearance. Uh, in this week, uh, while Rihanna Burroughs and e e Sheila Bradley claim their first GCA AC Volleyball Players of the Week awards. So Burroughs has three point, that's my words, 6.1 kills, 65 total. Uh, so, of course, uh, the, the two leaders, the two leaders and the two leaders being uh, Chloe and Burroughs are from the Mobile, Alabama area. So I want to congratulate those two areas, attack and setters. Um, so in getting those, what you call kills. So uh, lots of honors going around to the GCAC uh, volleyball teams as well. So, and again, congratulations to Fisk on joining the GCAC. 
No doubt about it. Great information. I think we have our first guest of the day. We have none other than the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff UAPB head football coach, Coach Doc Gamble, joining us on Inside the Lab. How you doing, Coach? I'm good. How about you? How about yourself? Man, it's good. We Welcome in, Coach. First Thank time. You. Excited, Coach. Right, right. Thanks for having me. Oh, man, it's our pleasure. And well-deserved, man. The season has gotten off to a great start. Uh, before we get into it, since um, you were named the coach coming into the spring, tell us a little bit about your background before we get into some of the football talk there for those that may not know much about you. Uh, okay. Well, you know, uh, from Cincinnati, Ohio, um, played at University of Tennessee at Martin. You know, I always say they are, guys tend to say hey, – uh, Midwestern down south. I say, well, I, I spent most of my life down south. You know, my family's from the south, and um, made up, made our way up to Cincinnati, and uh, spent a lot of my summers in Mississippi, and you know, and got my education in, in the south. So, uh, I guess I'm a southern guy. Uh, you know, uh, I got southern in my blood, you know, so to speak. So, uh, and, about it. <laughs> spent a lot of, and then you know, in coaching too, spent all my recruiting. Uh, everywhere I've been, is I've been the, one of the guys who recruited out of the South. Uh, but anyway, you know, I've been a uh, prior to coming here, I was at Kent State University. Uh, prior to that, I was a head high, uh, I was at Alcorn State for a year. Prior to that, I had high school coach. I spent time before that, I was at uh, uh, East Carolina University, D3, a D3 college coach as well. And um, I was at the University of Cincinnati also uh, with uh, Bush Jones and that crew. So um, I've been around. Um, you know, and, and uh, I actually got started coaching at University of Tennessee, Martin, where I played at as a student assistant. And you know, I was going and I was going to go into coaching. And then, uh, you know, so uh, that's a little bit about me. You know, you know, so I was ba basically I've been a, been a college guy, high school guy, and now back in college. Well, it's good to have you back in the SWAC. Um, obviously, your track record in terms of, as you said, what you do for recruiting. Uh, Cincinnati, obviously, Alcorn, we've seen what they've yeah. done over the past couple of years. Now well, we and we try to tell folks about the resurgence for Pine Bluff, and uh, obviously the proof is in the pudding thus far this season. So, yeah, uh, what and, you uh, mean, recruiting has really been nice. Yeah, we uh, and uh, just to go back, you know, uh, I was on the staff with Jay Hobson, Fred McNair, uh, Willie Simmons, Cedric Thomas. Uh, we were all there together at the same time. That was that first staff, so that was a yeah, I remember. Nice staff. I mean, it was a really nice staff. <laughs> wow, it was the first one to fly the coop, you know, fly, to fly out, they got out of the nest, but. You know, that was, we were all there together at one point. Man, just think about some of the names you just dropped. Yeah. Many of those folks are head coaches now. Yeah. Or, or had been head coaches. Yeah. Uh, that's amazing when you talk about what was going on in Alcorn. And it makes sense now when you talk about the success yeah. uh, they had. And so appreciate sharing a little bit of that insight for uh, yeah. viewers here. And they always like to really find out a little bit about the background. But let's get into um, the most recent game. Obviously, before this last weekend, you went down to Pine Bluff. So over the last couple of weeks, you went to two of the toughest places uh, in terms of overall winning for yeah. percentage and tradition, and you got in the victories. Uh, the last one was really impressive, 48 to 21, as you know, over Pine Bluff and uh, Gramlin. Uh, Skylar Perry is really playing well. But it's tough to just name a couple of players because when you start getting into the numbers with your wide receivers, uh, what you're doing rushing, you have so many players that are really playing well. You were just seen by the accolades this past week in terms of the swag. And that's just on the offense. You start talking about the defense. They're also just playing well. Did you have the kind of confidence coming in the season that it was the team was ready to make that turning point and actually get it done on the field? The talent was there, but now we're seeing it on the field. But I, oh, I tell you what, we um... – when, t when, I, when I was able to, when I was handed the position or when, when I got the position, you know, we knew we had some pieces and uh, uh, we just wanted to make sure that we were able to keep it together and, and uh, so we could put the puzzle together, um, you know, and it wasn't really, it wasn't really hard to do because of, uh, well, it was kind of hard because you had, we had to, you know, a coach leave and then they promote me, but it was, I was a familiar face. Uh, so that, that kind of helped out, you know, a whole lot. And, and, uh, but we, we knew we had something to work with. And, uh, you know, we lost some close games in, in 19. 
And um, and then we won the last one. We just wanted to build upon that, you know, and, and that's that's what I, we wanted to do uh, was keep to keep that going. And uh, and then just for me, I, I was telling I said, yeah, we 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 got a parade. Everybody ready to celebrate, a par- have a parade because we won six and five. And I'm like, for six and five now, that just needs to just be an average year from here on out, you know. And and uh, <laughs> uh, so that, I mean, you know, that's not, let it be uh, let it be said. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. So. Uh, so we just said, we're going to, we're going to up the standard now, you know, we need to start talking about winning and winning all the time. And really that's what our, my conversation is. You know, like I say, I, I don't, I don't have any, uh, uh, let's win one. I mean, let's, you know, all right, hey guys, we, we played well, you know, all my, everything I talk about is winning. So, and, um, and, and you got to do it, you got to do it. And, and, you know, you got Southern and Grambling and are, have been the class of the, of the West and, uh, you know, and they've learned how to win. They, and they've been doing it for a long time. So, and, and to me, as far as us getting our program to where they are, that's not a bad thing at all. You know, and that's what the expectation is, is, is to be at the top and, and, and to stay there once we get there. So, um, we, we just don't, uh, you know, we're going to play hard. And we gonna, we, we got to say, we say, hey, go empty the bucket, you know, and then we let the chips fall the way they may. So, uh, and that's what we do. Yeah, I've heard of some of your tricks in the trade of what you yeah. do doing practice all week. You're getting ready for the Grambling game. Uh, maybe a little later before we get out of here, you might share some of that. But I understand if you want to keep that in your pocket there. But I heard that that was that was how you motivate a team. Seriously, uh-huh. uh, I really appreciate hearing some of the backstories of what you're able to do and you're seeing it play out. With that, let me let Charles jump in here and follow up with a question. Oh, oh first of all, Coach Gamble, uh, congratulations on being Louisiana State champs. Uh, number one. So, <laughs> so I wanted to follow up on that. And you kind of touched on a little bit. Uh, the program was six and five last year. Uh, and you start the season off with these, you know, these big wins over Southern and Grambling. Uh, within that six and five season, uh, could you kind of see the pendulum swinging in, in, in Pine Bluff's direction where you knew you had the talent uh, to, to uh, compete and win these games? I, well, for us, it was just falling back and looking back at the, uh, the 19 season and reminding guys how close we were. You know, uh, we played Southern pretty tough for about a half, you know, um, in 19. We played Grambling down to the last play. You know, they made more and more play than us. And then you just fall back on that and say, hey, how, do you remember that? And do you really think that they were that much better than you? You know, and, and uh, but the, the thing that you, you had to know that I had to relate to them guys is, the reason they won because they knew how to win and, and they, they typically won those type of games. Uh, mm-hmm. You can see their pedigree, you know, um, especially in close games. And, you know, so, uh, and, and it got to a point when, when I, and I, I think I've harped on them so much, it got to the point when we got the good lead against Southern, then they started making a run and it started hitting me in the back of my mind. I, okay, now here it comes. All right. They're going to make their run. And Hey, but, but the kids didn't think about it like that, you know, sure. so just, Hey, we, we need to make a play and we're going to make it. So, uh, and they did. So, but that, that's, that's just uh, we've we've been able to teach from the uh, from the previous two years uh, to now uh, and be able to reach back and pull some things from the past that, that's been help that's helped us learn how to uh, to get to where we are today. You know, and actually I had to do a little bit more extra motivation today at practice. You know, so I always tell them, I say college football now is what is what have you done for me lately? Now what what happened last week is last week. So this is a, what have you done for me lately? Business and you got to show up and go. You know, and so. Um, you got to show up every week, you know, especially in SWAC now. You know, there's no – the only off week you have is is, uh, is when you don't have a team on your schedule that week, you know. So, mm. uh, but every week you got to show up and play. It don't matter who you're playing from top to bottom. No doubt, yeah. no doubt. That's a great point when you talk about it. And since 2019, think about this, Charles and Mike, uh, Tennessee State, Southern, and Grambling. Those are the victory to the credit since 2019 over some of the Blue Bloods, as people would say. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, things going in the right direction. I say for Pine Bluff. Y'all don't know. Y'all might want to watch this game this Saturday uh, when they uh, strap it up against Alabama State. That's going to be a good one. Three of the last four at home. With that, Mike, jump in here and ask a follow up question. Yeah, uh, Coach uh, Doc Gamba. I'd like to also just say thank uh, thanks for coming on the show and congratulations. Thank you. Uh, my question is this. Yeah. You know, last year, I think Charles alluded to it, you were six and five. We saw glimpses of the team kind of turning that corner to kind of be the upper echelon in the SWAC West. Uh, talk to us, if you will, about 
um, the seemingly more of the integration of the receiving game or more balance between the receiving game and the offense and how you really integrated uh, Harry Ballard the third and then Josh Wilkes and even the tight end Jer Jeremy Brown into this offense to more balance it with the run to have a really formidable offense of course you're leading the swag in offense but what you know what have you done with this offense to really turn this corner and make this a juggernaut offense uh, that's easy. Yeah. We tell him well, Taylor Porter's not here with us anymore. You know, he graduated. You know, we, we were going to pound Taylor Porter um, until he couldn't run anymore. You know, so he's not gone. I mean, he's gone right now. Uh, but the other part about it, too, Harry's been good since he's gotten on campus. Uh, Josh Wilkes has been good since he's gotten on campus. Josh has just uh, hadn't played a lot of football due to some injuries. You know, but Harry's been consistent. You know, he was all swag performer. So, um, but he, those guys have been here. You know, so uh, to me, you know, guys are asking questions about him now, but I, I say Harry's been here since day one now, and he's been balling since day one. Uh, so for us to, you know, my biggest worry was, uh, was it going to be enough footballs for those guys out there? Not only you have Harry, you had, you know, DeWan Miller was a freshman, uh, got freshman swag recognition uh, his freshman year. Uh, and you got Tyron Ralph, you know, in there. So uh, we got a crew, we got a crew and, and uh, we do a lot. Um, you know, I just tell them guys, don't be, don't get bored with being good. You know, so mm. they challenge each other every day. And then we got a good secondary where they go at it at with each other every day. So as iron sharpens iron every single day, you know, we had somebody out at practice and it was, it was wow. You know, I, we didn't know, you know, so right now uh, we know that we got that crew to be honest, which is really, it's the next guy in, you know, and that's what we got to get to where the next guy in is still performing at the level of a Harry Ballard, Josh Wilkes, Tyron Ralph and uh, Dewan Miller, you know, so, uh, uh, and we're still trying to develop the next Taylor Porter. And, uh, and, uh, and they just got some young, we just got some young guys right now. So uh, back there with that stable. So, and then to be honest with you too, is, uh, the other thing, big deal is, is uh, it starts up front. You know, we got two good ones on the left side and we got a pleasant surprise with the, uh, with the center. Uh, we, we got a great, I mean, we already know about Mark and uh, AJ Smith and then pleasant surprise with uh, Eric Jones at center, Noah Hayes at the right tackle and um, Jordan Mack at the right guard. So, um, you know, it's, it's been, it's been, uh, it's been pretty good. I, but, it, you know, to be honest with you too, is, is uh, I feel better when I go home at night when we struggle against the defense. Cause I know, you know, defensively uh, we're getting done, you know, so, uh, and that's, that's been real good for us. All right. Thanks coach. Last question here, coach, uh, as you talk about it, each week now is just a serious matchup in the swag. Uh, for the fans, uh, extremely uh, exciting to watch it um, with these type of games. And then in the fall, obviously, you had Bam, you and Bethune Cookman. I'm not going to ask you that. If you if you find time, we'd love to bring you back on the show once you finish the season because I know coaches, you want to focus on what's next. Yeah. What's next is Alabama State that came off a big win against Jackson State. Tell us a little bit, what are you looking at? What are you seeing on film in regards to – uh, Alabama State, or at least what you can share. We don't want you to share any secrets, uh, but you don't want to. I, I, you know, everybody saw the game last week. It's no secrets. They're a good football team. I mean, I, 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 they're stingy on defense, and and um, and they've been getting it done on offense. You know, Ezra Gray, that's that's a guy now. So um, quarterbacks play well. You know, they they're doing it with the guys up front as well. I mean, it's a good football team. And, you know, yeah. so I, I kind of joke is really. Couple guys in in this conference that I that I know I know Fred of course because I work with him and then I know Coach Hill you know I said this way I think I mentioned it earlier I probably won't get you know Hill probably won't get a text from me and I know he ain't gonna text me this week so uh, mm -hmm. over there because they do, the guys do a good job you know I mean they do a good job and uh, you can see it last week and and uh, and they they uh, they gonna play you down to the wire you know so uh, it'll be a good contest this weekend. Well, we look forward to watching it. That's a 7 o'clock ESPN 3 game. Um, kudos for what you're doing with the product. Before we let you go, is anything that you want to say to the Golden Lion fans out there? And before I say that, um, you know, while the team is talented, I would say if people are not paying attention, you got the best wide receiver core, not just in the SWAC, but at the FCS level in terms of what they're doing as a collective group. And you got some individuals that uh, – we're not careful what we're seeing them on Sunday in yep. terms of the NFL. So keep your eyes on them. But anything you want to say to your fan base in regards to those that follow us? Well, just continue to support us and uh we're gonna continue to play hard. We're gonna give you, we're gonna uh, 
play as hard as we can. We're going to empty the bucket every time we go out and play. And uh, we got, we got another, also, we got another model that hangs right above our door and says, I'm going to give my, I will give my all for the Golden Lions today. So, and that's what they're going to get. Mm. No doubt about it. Please uh, give a thanks and a shout out mm. to Dwayne Lewis. Um, he's really uh, good in terms of making sure that we get an opportunity to talk to yourself like that. So thank him for making sure that we got an opportunity to talk with you. Good luck as you continue with the season, and we'd love to have an opportunity to talk again. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. No, thank you, Coach. Uh, this thanks, is Coach. Uh, the HBC Force Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. We're going to take a break. Stick with us, and we'll come up with the second half of the show. Have you had your Earth Blend coffee today? At Earth Blend Coffee, we take pride in offering you the very best of beans across the world. Blended and roasted to perfection. Giving you superior quality and satisfying and flavorful taste. Experience the world in one cup with Earth Blend Coffee. It was a, a monumental game for a and and Tampa. It was a monumental game. Somebody had to lose, and thank God it was them this time. We knew it was going to be a battle. Look at Jake Avis' record. 202 and 36, I think, some, some un, off the wall figures. And nobody would play him because they didn't want to take a chance of getting beat. But the truth of it is, over 46,000 tickets. Blacks were sitting on in, in the East Stands. The whites were sitting in the West Stands. And the score wound up 34-28. Uh, the only thing we proved that uh, we weren't inferior, that we were not inferior, and we were not afraid. For one night, for 160 minutes, we were better than them. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay. Call Cuvay. We talking about talking about. They compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a law, yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention. This is Dr. Bill with Inside HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. As we get back into it, let's jump right back into the poll rankings, and then we'll see if there's some other additional news you might want to share. But before we get into our next interview, which is going to give you some information on baseball, some updates, some big games up, up in the North Dallas area. Um, it be fascinating when you talk about the Frisco in that uh, nice state of art baseball facility they have up there, minor league park. There's going to be some good baseball being played up there. Absolutely. Hey, with that, let me get you into this. This is the final poll ranking for the women's basketball after the conclusion of this season. Uh, receiving votes is Alabama AM and Bulldogs, 10 and 7, 8 and 5 with 30 votes. Grambling State Tigers, 10 and 10 on the season, 8 and 6 in terms of what they did in the conference play with 39 votes. And just outside of the top five are Southern Jaguars, 12 and 11, 11 for 44 votes. No team dropped out this week, so you have your top five programs. Um, and in terms of this final ranking, you have number five, Morgan State Bears, come in at number five at 12 and four, eight and two, 46 points, bringing us to number four. Slight change here. They dropped a spot previously to rank three was Howard Bison, 15 and four, 10 and two is highly in the season with 80 points. And number three, Alabama State Hornets, they jumped up a spot from number four last week. Uh, in this final poll ranking, 16 and 4, 14 and 3 with 81 points, bringing us to number two. North Carolina AT State Aggies finished the season at 14 and 3, 9 and 1, four first place votes, 89 points, remain at number two. The number one team, Jack State Tigers, getting it done in the regular season and the postseason over a tough Alabama State team. So they had two out of three of the victories against 
what is now the number three ranked team for a final season of 18 and 6, 14 and 1, five first place votes, 92 points. Playing Baylor was a tough one uh, as Aggies played North Carolina State and represented really well in that matchup. But Jackson State gets it done in terms of the women's basketball poll ranking. Let me go to Char- uh, Mike first. What are your thoughts on the final poll ranking? Oh, no, I think you got it right. The the top three as they were, um, I think you got it right at the end of the day. Um, Alabama State played very tough. They, um, you know, a couple of ball swings, you know, they could have been playing in the uh, tournament, but I think you got it right. Jackson State, congratulations to them and that program and Coach Reed as well. Yeah, they're really playing well. Two consecutive years with the SWAC regular season. A championship obviously couldn't defend the tournament championship because there was no tournament last year. So a little different there, but we'll see moving forward. It gets interesting when we go from 10 to 12 teams, bringing in Bethune Cookman who did not play this season, but the last time they won the hard one, they brought home a MEAC championship. So you're talking about adding to the treasure chest on the women's side. Just amazing. With that, Charles, what's your thoughts in terms of the top five of the women's final poll? I agree with Mike. I think you got, I mean, these were, I thought the, the best, uh, five teams during the course of the season, and uh, you touched on the stat there, uh, beating Alabama State three times, uh, or I'm sorry, two out of three times uh, this season was huge. So I, I thought Alabama State had a very, very formidable team. So uh, I think you got this one right. North Carolina a and and, and Howard uh, were, I thought, the, the, the best teams over there in the MEAC. But uh, Jackson State uh, definitely number one uh, in this uh, final rank and couldn't agree more. So that would mean they are Dr. Cabill's uh, HBCU uh, national champion. Absolutely. That's what it means. That's what it means. All right, just checking. I'm yeah. going to make sure I'll send this over to Jackson State and uh, <laughs> make sure Dennis Driscoll gets this information. So. <laughs> That's, that is exactly what it means. So I you, appreciate you, you making you, sure that. You just had to slide that one in, didn't you, Charles? <laughs> oh, well, I'm just saying, I, I got the bowling one to start the day off. So. <laughs> oh, man, this is good. All right, for the men's final, week 12, receiving votes. Florida a and Rattlers, 8-12, 7-5, 12 first place votes. As we said, they enter into the SWAT next year. Rounding Tigers went out with season 500 at 12-12, 9-6 in the conference rate. Coppin State Eagles, 9-13, 8-4. Just outside of the top five is North Carolina A&T State Aggies, 11-10, 7-1. Fortunately, they didn't play in the MEAC tournament because of COVID protocol, so they didn't get a chance to improve a lot, really. But let's bring it to the top five uh, programs here on the men's side in terms of what's going on here. Number five, Morgan State Bears, 14-8, and 7-5, uh, 52 points, finish at five. You have uh, Jackson State Tigers, uh, number four, uh, 12-6, and 11-0, and one first place vote for 70 points. You had number three, Norfolk State Spartans at 17-8, and 8-4, Two first place votes, 77 points. And number two, you have Prairie View AM that jumps over Norfolk State in terms of their final ranking, 16 and 5, 13 and 0. Two first place votes just, just edging out Norfolk State for their second spot. Um, in a lot of ways, two of the three victories were over Texas Southern, the number one team that gets it done. Texas Southern Tigers, 17 and 9, 10 and 3. Four, place, four first place votes, I should say, 96 points. Uh, with a number one ranking as they remain there uh, as both Norfolk State and Texas Southern, who said earlier, got it done in the tournament to get their vote. With that, let me start with Charles this time. What are your thoughts on the top five for the men's final poll rank? Well, no trip to Norfolk uh, anytime soon. So uh, I think <laughs> that was a tough one, two and three with print PV in Norfolk. Uh, but I, I, I'll go with you on that. I, 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 Prairie View was, I think, one of the uh, dominant teams in the SWAC offseason. Just came up short uh, in the SWAC tournament. But, but Texas Southern, they get it done again. Can't say enough about them. Uh, they played big when it was time to play big. No doubt about it. I think your point, I think you could flip Norfolk State or Prairie View number two. I think with Prairie View playing the bulk of their games uh, in the conference, yeah. That yeah. is what is them out over Norfolk State. The, the divisional hurt them. Um, to some degree, I heard it hurt them in seeding as well. Uh, then you have, have the point that while well, uh, Norfolk State, they share a championship of the North Division of the teams that were playing while Prairie View shared it with Jackson State uh, in terms of the regular season. Um, so it'll be interesting. Wouldn't that be a nice matchup to start off the season? Or yes. Part yeah. of the 
non-conference season to see Prairie View and Norfolk State line it up. Uh, Prairie View and Texas Southern got it on for a home and away uh, several years ago, and both of those games were really good games. Uh, the one here in Houston certainly was. With that, let me get your final thoughts, Mike, before we go to our next interview. No, I agree with uh, both your comments. I think Norfolk State, you could, you know, switch them out with Prairie View. I think they looked at the schedule that both teams played during the year. Prairie View did have the advantage of playing more of their games. They also played TSU uh, twice. So, and then beat TSU two out of three times. Unfortunately, that third time was the one that counted. Uh, TSU brought the thunder when it counted the most in the SWAC championship game. So, um, hats off to Texas Southern University. Hats off to Prairie View and Norfolk State on a on a on a season. I wonder what would have happened had North Carolina A and T been able to. Yeah, yeah. That, that would be the remaining question for me. Um, they looked good, at least you know statistically, and unfortunately they had that unfortunate cir- unfortunate circumstance. I just will always wonder how they would have fared, you know, going into the tournament. Seven and one in conference play. It would have been interesting with with A and T uh, in the tournament. So uh, that was a tough break for them. But uh, I, that's one of those lingering things that you're going to have in the back of your head. I wonder if you know A and T could have made that run in the MIAC tournament. Yeah, yeah, that that'll be one of those things that goes down with the ages of uh, just getting that question in a lot of ways. I, I, any other final thoughts on the baseball poll ranking? I mean, basketball final poll ranking. You know, I, I take my hats off to all the athletes. I mean, they uh, really uh, fought through during the, really the crux of this pick in the winter months, and we had some cancellations. But I take my hats off to all the student athletes for uh, mustering through um, the most trying of seasons. And I think it's one of those seasons we're going to all remember, uh, you know, not having any fans in the stands, but they somehow uh, got the season done. So hats off. I tip my hat to the two, <clears throat> in addition to the league, uh, to the SWAC as well. Uh, they had some stumbles. They had games postponed. The SWAC had a plan. They had to adjust at times, uh, you know, go with, you know, fl- be flexible. And yeah. they were able to get this season accomplished in a professional manner. You know, yes, you didn't have all the crowds there. You didn't have the bands there. But the SWAC put a program together. And so did the institution. They bought into that plan. So, Kudos and hats off to the SWAC and, and all of the member institutions of the SWAC as well. Exactly. Great points made by both. Now on to our next interview, Prentice Hill. Erwin Hill is here uh, of the VCSG360.org, giving us some love and shine again. Um, well, since basketball is officially over, I guess we can get into baseball with the ping of the bats at the college level. Uh, with that, we have upcoming this weekend is the State Fair Diamond Classic and the Lone Star Diamond. Uh, it ought to be some fun in North Texas, up there in the Frisco area. Uh, BCSG 360, if you remember, is the nation's largest organization exclusively representing the Black college community. Welcome back. Glad to be back. How you brothers doing this evening? Man, we're good. Doing- How are you doing? Doing I'm well. Doing fine, oh, man. He's busy. He's busy. Uh, that, that's it. That's the definition right now. I'm so busy, man. I caught a flight out of Jacksonville, Florida this morning. And as soon as I landed uh, in DFW's airport, man, I've been on one call after another. But uh, very excited wow. about the uh, success of the inaugural Jack's Diamond Classic down in Jacksonville, Florida, featuring Edward Waters College in Savannah State. Our great partners down there with the uh, Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp. Man, it was a great ball game. I'm not sure if you guys were able to catch the highlights, man, but the home team uh, in the bottom of the eighth uh, had a grand slam home run to pull ahead and uh, take the lead and end up winning the game uh, seven to four. So uh, we had a lot. Uh, uh, back, check this out. We got a little surprise for you. Watch this. Okay. We're going to sneak this in on you for you. Since you mentioned it. That's I mean. Well, he's old for the old for the day. He's Coach probably told him, well, go up there and be aggressive. Shake it off. So he saw something he liked, and he went after it. One ball, one strike to the plate. There's a shot. Right shot. That right. might be. It could, it could be. Right field. Grand slam. Caden no. Frankie, yes, sir. What a shot. That's how you get hot, young fella. 
a grand slam over the right field wall. Puts EWC up seven to four. Wow. Yeah, wow. shout out to Brian and AD on the call. Wow. wow. <laughs> yes, Brian and AD bringing it. Hey, man, that's a lot of excitement. Mm -hmm. If you're going to bring anything close to that in Frisco, yeah. uh, between these classic matchups in a conference affair that are playing in a, a minor league ballpark, you got Southern, <laughs> Arkansas Pine Bluff, you got Prairie View and Grambling, you're trading – the football classic that just played a couple of weeks that's usually playing the fall, you trade that in for the dirt, the bat, the diamond, and you're going to find a way to get rekindle some of that uh, information that came between Southern and Jaguars that just had had a classic on the football field in a lot of ways as uh, down went Southern. So, man, if this is exciting, this is crazy. Let me give the schedule, uh, at least for the Arkansas Pine Bluff part of it. Friday, March 26th, they play at 1 o'clock. On Saturday, March 27, they play at 6 o'clock. On Sunday, they play at 12. Same play, same bad channel. You have Grambling and Prairie View. So on Friday, they play at 6. On Saturday, they play at 1. And Sunday, they play at 4. I really love the way you strategically match this up for conference games to be able to have the two double matchups, if you would, double headers, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday spread out. Plenty of people have plenty of time to see a game, if not two games, or a couple of games over the weekend. Talk about how you came up with that concept. So I'll talk about the concept as well as update you on the latest and greatest as it relates to those, those matchups. Uh, so essentially what we had originally designed was a uh, small HBCU event and a large HBCU event. And so Grambling State and Prairie View was designed to be that large HBCU event in the State Fair Diamond Classic. And we had reserved the uh, Lone Star Diamond Classic for Wiley College and Texas College. Uh -huh. uh, and because the both of those programs canceled their seasons, uh, we were scrambling trying to find a matchup to fill uh, that event. And so uh, we had to go back a couple of times to uh, Southern University uh, to see if they would participate. Uh, the second time was a charm um, at the uh, the pushing of Coach James uh, at Pine Bluff, him being close friends with uh, Tory Hunter. We were at his restaurant hosting a uh, planning meeting, um, and he said, Hill, I, I, I really want to uh, revisit us participating in, in the event. And so we did and uh, everything fell into place. And so that's how we got Southern University and um, and Pine Bluff to uh, fill in the uh, gaps in the uh, Lone Star Diamond Classic. And so the irony of that is this. Uh, of course, you know, uh, we are living in a new norm uh, in college sports with uh, the uh, pandemic, COVID-19. Um, and so uh, we just got word earlier today that uh, Prairie View a and uh, due to contact tracing, um, had a uh, contact within their uh, ball club of a positive test. And so that has impacted the State Fair Diamond Classic. Uh, and so we're going to make an official statement as soon as we get uh, the word from uh, Prayer Views uh, Sports and Information Director um, as it relates to that situation. And it's just kind of the norm. A lot of, you know, Coach yeah, Riggins, Co Coach Riggins apologized. And I was like, Coach, there's no need to apologize, man. Worst case scenario, we'll be back next year with this event. But I am excited to say that we've talked to the various stakeholders. We're going to look at uh, postponing the event and hopefully rescheduling that event uh, at a later date and time within the next few weeks here in Frisco. Um, and so we don't want to short change the fans. We're committed to black college sports. We're committed to uh, black college baseball. So we're going to work with our stakeholders to see if we can get that game rescheduled. And if everything falls into place, uh, we'll be back again for a second time uh, here in Frisco. We kind of like it here. So uh, we're very excited about it. But if, had we not uh, been able to get that Southern matchup and Pine Bluff matchup in place, we'll be kind of stuck right now without an event. But so big shout out to Southern University, big shout out to Arkansas Pine Bluff uh, for accepting the invitation the second time around to participate because you never know 
uh, you know, what the future holds. And so as a result, we have an opportunity to host an event this weekend because of them accepting those invitations. Wow, that's big time. Thank yeah. you for breaking yeah, news. Thank you, a lot going on. And like you said, it's that um, world that we're living in with COVID-19. You just never know. But it says a lot about your ability to negotiate the space like that and, and yeah. how you were able to always think ahead about opportunities and um, the relationships that you're building with so many different people. I think it says a lot about uh, your character, who you are, and more importantly, like you said, your commitment. Uh, look forward, myself getting up those, that way, um, to see this in action and being able to um, partner with you in some type of way. But really excited about having you on to break that type of news. Last thing I want to talk to you about before we get up uh, uh, top of the hour and close out the show is tell us, for those that are interested in getting the tickets, how can they get tickets? Oh, man, tickets are available. Uh, go to the uh, Frisco Rough Riders uh, website. You can Google Frisco Rough Riders tickets. Uh, this is a special event. Click on the special event, and there we are right there with tickets. We have uh, weekend pass tickets that are $40. Uh, we have uh, single day passes as well. So uh, buy, buy, buy a ticket, not just for yourself, but buy one for a friend, family. Come on out to the ballpark. We got games. The updated schedule is Friday's game will be a six o'clock start time uh, between Pine Bluff and uh, Southern University. Then they'll come back on Saturday at four o'clock. Uh, and then again at noon on, um, on Saturday. I mean, on Sunday, I'm sorry. Uh, so three games this weekend, uh, Southern versus Pine Bluff. Uh, we got some special presentations. Uh, we got Tory Hunter throwing out the first pitch on, on Friday evening. Um, and so it's going to be a great event, man. We're excited about kicking off Black College Baseball in a big way in the DFW market. And uh, like I say, if nothing else, especially with the day's events and watching the game last night, uh, and I saw you guys having a conversation before I uh, was called on, but uh, I, I, I don't think enough is said. Uh, well, yeah, we definitely appreciate uh, conferences like the SWAC that forged ahead uh, in order to make uh, the seasons uh, work. Uh, but more importantly, the shout out and recognition needs to go to the coaches and the players because they've had to deal with an awful amount of, can you imagine being on pins and needles about a test every week, uh, yeah. having tests multiple times a week. And on top of all of this, just to compete, but they, they are student athletes. And so they're still having to suffer through all of this as well as, you know, uh, make the grades in the classroom. So enough isn't said about uh, these student athletes that ha have had to uh, experience this and endure this. I'm pretty sure to make them uh, better in life. Uh, and dealing with certain, certainly the challenges that will will be uh, facing them uh, as they uh, matriculate through life. But man, enough can't be said about these uh, student athletes and these uh, coaches. Man, they've actually done a great job. Uh, some of them have been bitten by the uh, COVID bug and had to uh, you know deal with that piece, not compete. Um, I'm dealing with SIAC programs, SIAC, and this is no shot to the SIAC. You know, everything comes down to. Uh, dollars and cents in some aspects and so to cancel some of these uh postseason championships uh i'm pretty sure they did not enter into those decisions lightly but these teams still are left without some of these opportunities to uh put a cap um onto their season and so you know we we definitely want to be a part of that and like i said we got some i can't make the announcement right now but we definitely got one of our postseason events lined up we're working on the other for baseball and so like I say I want to be a, a, a definitely a friend of this show um, and hopefully I'll be back in a, a week or so uh, to talk about what we got postseason wise but we're, we're making history man yeah you got some breaking news like you did earlier in terms of what you have for postseason yeah you'll be welcome back to the show we yeah. like the breaking news here and if you're getting it done and providing opportunity we certainly would do that we're right up against the clock here um, and so we're going to say thanks. Uh, we'll be catching up with you in terms of that breaking news. So as soon as you get that information, let us know. And as you perfectly said, uh, can't agree enough with you in regards to just the kudos that go out to the players and the coaches that are going through this endearingly, such that fans like ourselves and the media 
people like yourself in terms of events that are making things happen can get it done as much as possible. So very well said. With that, we want to say thank you for your time and we look forward to you as we know you got a very busy schedule trying to finalize a couple of things. And it sounds like you finalizing many things. Uh, Quite a bit. Up, uh, to the, the kicking things off as you did in Jacksonville, that was a great event. And it, like I said, you got things going on like this. Uh, many more people are going to be involved in what you get done. Last thing I do want to say, for those that are not in town that are going to bring uh, young kids out there, it's open. Uh, you can watch it streaming. As you saw that, tune on the BCS Network, one of the few places that you can get baseball games in the SWAC stream. So this is not only a great event, but they're also streaming it for those that are not in the local market. So check that out. A lot of good things that Prentice Hill is doing. So congratulations ahead of time because I see a lot of magic in front of you. Uh, due to your hard work. Thank you, brothers. I look forward to working with you guys. You guys are doing a great job as well. Like I say, BCSN um, is doing a great job. We're proud of that contract. And like I say, we're proud to have an opportunity to come on your platform and talk about what we love near and dear, and that's our Black College sports and Black College baseball. No doubt. Thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. Dr. Gaville inside the HBC Sports Lab. One last thing before we shut it off. Thank you for your time, Princess Hill. Let's go over this football poll ranking week four. A couple of changes this week, so let me give it to you. Uh, receiving votes this week is Delaware State Hornets, one and one, 42 points. South Carolina State Bulldogs, one and one, 61 points. Just outside of the top five is Alabama State Hornets with that big victory over Jackson State. They go to one and one on the season and one and one in the conference race is 62 points. Top five programs. With one dropping out, South Carolina State Bulldogs dropped out this week, bringing us to number five. Southern Jaguars, with their big win over Texas Southern, go to two and one, two and one over all 71 points. They were not ranked, so they jump in the top five. Number four is Prairie Game and Panthers, two and oh. Uh, just like you heard with the baseball program, the football program was on the COVID protocol. So they were not able to play this week, but they remain, uh, they actually drop a spot not playing last week, but they have one first place votes, 80 points. At number three, you have Arkansas Pine Bluff, Golden Lions, 2-0. Two, two first place votes with 91 points. They jump up a spot after their big victory over Grambling State, 2-0 on the season, as we said. And number two, Jack State Tigers. They fall out of the number one spot, 3-1, 2-1, with four first place votes, 109 points. Our new number one, our back, I should say, regaining the number one ranking this week is Alabama a and Bulldogs, 1-0 on the season, five first place votes, 110 points. Two first place votes. With that, we're gonna tease you with Charles and Mike. I see their look. They want some comments. They're gonna have to wait. You all gonna have to tune back in on Thursday as we give you our football weekend updates and reports. And where to see you they that have on a poll rank. That's what we do. That's what we call. Who rank. did that poll? Yeah, we gotta talk about this Thursday. We gotta talk about that poll. Oh, man, y'all don't want none of this. What are y'all talking about? Man. With that, that's Dr. Bills with Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast and your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Kenyatta Kabil, Dean of HBCU Sports with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Hope you enjoyed our interview with Doc, Coach Doc Gamble of Pine Bluff, our interview with uh, Prentice Hill, talking about the Baseball Diamond Classics that he's getting going on and some breaking news that he shared with us and possibly some breaking news in the next couple of weeks of postseason events he may be doing for some of the uh, smaller HBCUs, if you would, operating at the NAIA Division II level. Check that out when we give you that news. That's going to be a classic matchup that you want to see. Again, we want to thank for you listening to Dr. Mills inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop, every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 o'clock. Catch us on Sunday for our weekend edition as we give you a breakdown of what happened on Saturday in terms of the football landscape. We look forward to next week as we will discuss the latest in the news Thursday as well as next week. Follow me, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill. That's D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-V-I-L on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. That's D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-V-I-L. Dream big and continue to move forward. We will talk with you soon. Charles. Horse. Mike. Lecture. Dismiss.
yeah. I love my HBCU. And boy, I love it, love it. I love it, love it. I love my HBCU. And man, I hope my team they won one. I hope my team they won one. Yeah, man. I hope my team they won one. I hope my team they won one. Yeah, I tune into the HBCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a loss. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, keep tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, he know what he be talking about. Mike and Charles, they know what they be talking about. They compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they won a loss.